Heke Kaitiaki Tangapu Tai, I was a one-year diploma in environmental management. It is also the first year of the three-year degree, Poturongo Kaitiaki Tangapu Tai Ao. It's a broad approach to environmental management with a good mix of practice and theory, and that allows us to respond to the needs of iwi. When we designed the course some years ago, we uh, spoke to the three iwi of our confederation, but also to other iwi about what they wanted in environmental practitioners and environmental managers. And they all said that the issues coming across their table, coming to their runanga or to their marae committees, are uh, wide ranging. So with that in mind, we designed a program that was a real broad approach to environmental management. We have a fabulous year one tutor, Dr. Mahinarangi Baker, who uh, leads our year one program and knows this coast very well, uh, knows the environmental issues that we're faced with and uh, is really clear about what solutions we should be adopting to share with our students and to better manage our, our, our coast. When I say coast, I don't mean uh, moana alone. I mean all sorts of environmental issues from biodiversity management, uh, island conservation, freshwater management, right through to ngahere issues, familiarisation with flora and fauna, particular to this area, all sorts of issues, she's on it. So the Heke Kaitiaki Tangapu Taiao is catered for all iwi around the motu. Those that want to come and gain a diploma or a degree in uh, environmental management. Mātauranga Māori is a cornerstone for our, for our program uh, in that all of our, our teachings and uh, research is done from a Mātauranga Māori place. Our program has whānau hapu and iwi in mind. We want people to be able to return to the iwi and play an active role in the management of their environment, not only at a theoretical level but at a, a practitioner level. Students will not only come here and learn theory but they'll also learn about how to hands-on get into a river and, and uh, monitor and assess that, that waterway uh, and find solutions so that they can return to their people with uh, recommendations or solutions around the management of their waterway, ngahere, motu, moana, uh, whatever it might be. So our course is taught through a Māori worldview and that stems from our origins, our creation stories, uh, rangi nui ki runga, papatua naku ki raro, me arawa tamariki, e noho nei ki wanganui. Um, we're wanting to give expression to that Māori worldview and to allow people to position themselves in the world and understand where it is that humans or people can uh, play an active role in the management of our taiao. So our course is delivered through a blended learning approach. That is, students will be exposed to some key material through the online Mudo space. They'll generally come down for a three-day uh, intensive uh, residential noho at Tuana Ngoraika Wanotaki and be exposed to both theory and practice in the field and then return home to some self-directed learning, uh, create an assignment and hopefully take the opportunity to look at a, a local environmental issue to them uh, back home uh, for their assignment. Upon completing the Heke Kaitiaki Tangapu Tai or the one year diploma in environmental management, uh, you can enter year two of the program, which is uh, the Poturongo Kaitiaki Tangapu Tai The first year, the one year diploma is the first year of our degree, so it's a one plus two uh, situation. If the Heke Kaitiaki Tangapu Tai uh, diploma sounds like the qualification for you, no mai ki te wānanga I've always loved to be in the Ngahere. I've always known that the trees and the birds and our rako, they're a lot more alive than we think. They're a lot more human than we even know. This connection I have is what helped me find this passion for rongoa. Ko Afina tuku ingoa, I studied heke rongoa at Te Wananga in 2018 and I finished the diploma. I've always loved to be in the Ngahere. I've always known that the trees and the birds and our rako, they're a lot more alive than we think. They're a lot more human than we even know. This connection I have is what helped me find this passion for rongoa. Ko Afina tuku ingoa, 
I studied Heke Rongoa at Te Wananga Arakawa in 2018 and I finished the diploma. Tihei Maori Ora. Te kui mai e koroma, rauranga tirama, uh, nau mai, ara mai ki te kui. A ki ngā mate o te wā, uh, ko tangi hi rā tātou, i runga i ngā marae o te mutu, uh, haere, haere, whakanga roa atu. Uh, ka hoki mai anō ki a tātou, te hunga ora, tātou e huitahi nei, uh, e rotu i tēnei uh, piringa whare, tēnei whaka, whare whakaruru hau o tātou, uh, o te rā, uh, tēnei whare whakaruru hau mō tō tātou mātou ranga Māori, nau mai, nau mai, hara mai. Haere mai, uh, i runga anō i te karanga o tēnei wānanga, hara mai uh, i tēnei rangi o uwe nuku, e ai ki ngā kōrero, uh, he rangi pai tēnei uh, ki te hui, uh, ki te kōrero anō hoki nō reira, nau mai, piki mai, kake mai. A warm welcome to you all, uh, both those in person here in Te Ara Tawhaki and those in the online space. Uh, a warm welcome to you all to our, this is the first of four uh, lectures uh, being hosted by Te Wānanga o Raukawa. Our kaupapa uh, for these, uh, this series is Kaitiakitanga, uh, with a focus on Maramataka Māori, uh, tēnā kaita katoa. Uh, if you haven't already, uh, please register online. You can go to wānanga.com uh, and register there. And that way um, we know who to expect uh, and we can keep in touch with you over the coming weeks. Uh, each of the lectures stand alone. And so you don't need to have uh, attended the lecture previous to be able to attend uh, the lecture that you're in. So please come to one or all of the lectures over the coming three or four weeks. Uh, to open our series, I'd like to call on Matuhuya Winiata, uh, Kaihotu of Mato, uh, Whakatuku Matauranga, Director of Creative Activity here at Tuananga Raukawa, Nongati Huya, Nongati Raukawa, Nongati Pare Raukawa, and Matuhuya Winiata. Tiki nakita oha wa tapu tota kia mai ai. Te whatu, te whatu, mā taka taka tū mai, porohi a ki te toki ai tū, ai tū e tapu takahu. E tapu takahu, ko ia te whetū, te whetū, te marama, te marama, tangaroa putei, te whana putu putu, tautika tautonu tō ara e tāne. Ka papa atarangi, ko koutu, ko koutu, ka kauhoro, ko kauhoro, te mate o koutu e. Ka whairu, ka riro i te uru rō rangitū mai ai me ānahara, tā ki tā ki nga te waka, kā te re hīhā, kā te re te waka. Te wahanga no te karekia whakatere i tō tātou waka o tāngi. Nā koe tiki atu, hei tuku i tēnei waka, ko tōnei hū, ki te whakamauatu ki te puna, ke reira e moiana, e hunana, E whanga mai ana, ko te mātauranga mo tēnei mea, te maramataka Māori. Ko ora wa tohu, tō tainui, tō te maramataka Māori, ko ngā whetū, ko te marama, ko tangaroa, ko tāne, ko rangi. E hara i te tangata te tikanga, ko tōna ao ke. Ka tere te waka, ka ora tēwi. The karekia that I recited is associated with the launching from Hawaii of our ancestral waka tāne. The karekia is recited today as we launch this waka dedicated to the exploration of Maramataka Māori. Let us explore what is Maramataka Māori, how was it developed, refined and used by our ancestors, and how maramataka can be adapted and used for everyday life today. As with the case with the launching of our waka tainui, in which the journey and the actions were informed, determined, 
and largely directed by the stars, uh, the moon, our atua, the elements. So it is with this waka, a maramataka Māori. But the journey has the purpose of reclaiming, rejuvenating, and reconnecting with this knowledge that is waiting in anticipation to re-engage with us, to be part of our lives. Let our understandings and our lives be enriched by this knowledge and by our journey and reuniting with it. Let our coming together and sharing of knowledge over this series of lectures remind us that, but also give further meaning to our existence, survival, and prosperity is informed, directed, and reliant on the environment and its entities and our positive and genuine engagement with it. Just as it was for our ancestors when they traveled to and landed in Aotearoa. Welcome to our whare, Te Ara Tawhaki, the pathway of Tawhaki, the house dedicated to our core functions of whakaako, teaching, and the whakatupu mātauranga, the growing of knowledge, and those who engage in this activity, like us today. A space that, along with its activities, makes an important contribution to the expansion of the knowledge continuum and to the survival of Māori as a people. No reira, no mai, hara mai, hoki mai, tēnā tātakato. Nei o te pūpuri, i ngā tēni maharae, whakakoroko nei kama perangi aure, Uh, before I just cover off a couple of housekeeping matters for us all, I just wanted to acknowledge those that have joined us online. Uh, we're going to show them up on the screen there. We have quite a few. You might recognise some of your friends' names there. Tēnā koutou, no mai, uh, piri mai. Uh, just a few housekeeping uh, and tikanga matters before we start. In terms of COVID-19, if you're unwell, please join us online. Uh, please scan the QR code during your stay. There are several around the room and on the entranceway to this building. Hand sanitizer is available and you're free to wear a mask in here if you choose. In case of emergency, uh, we'll file out any of the, the three doors in this, in this whare, in this room, and we'll make our way out onto the large grass area in front of the building uh, called Otaki. Um, please uh, refrain from recording this lecture yourself. It is being recorded, and after our kaikōrero have vetted it, we'll uh, make it available uh, to those that have registered. Uh, and just out of respect for our speakers, we'd like to welcome questions at the end. Uh, for anyone that needs the, to use the whare paku, um, please use the rear door of this room and make your way down to the back of Te Ara Tawhaki, uh, Te Kete Uru Uru Tau, and our whare paku are at the, the rear end here. In terms of timings, I'd like to, um, without further ado, introduce our speakers. We'll be finishing around the one o'clock mark and we'd like to welcome everyone for Kai, so please stay on for that. Um, Kei te huri te kei o tō tātou waka ki a koutou, uh, te toko tūru, kua whakautu nei te tono a te wānanga o reikawa ki te haramai ki te kōrero. Uh, e aku whaia, e aku kui, kuia, uh, haramai, haramai, tauti mai. Uh, e hoa mā, uh, no te kotahitanga uh, e nei toko tūru, no ngā iwi o Ngāti Raikawa, Te Atiawa o Ngāti Toa Rangatira. Uh, ko haere pēnei mā e nei tokotoru ki te kōrero e pāna ki tēnei me te maramataka. Uh, Minga mahi, uh, kei mua i te aroaro. Uh, 
uh, he kano he kite he, he ingoa ko rangona uh, iroto inga mahi rongoa menga mahi uh, kaitia kitanga uh, te nei au e hoa tu nei te rākau kōrero kia koutou, te nā koutou, te nā koutou, uh, kei a koutou te rākau kōrero. Uh, e tika ana tēnei ki te whakahuri te mihi mai oha ki a koutou o te wānungo raukaua nā koutou, hei karanga ki a mātou ki te haramai, uh, ki te whāriki e nei kōrero e pāna ki tēnei tō tātou maramataka rongo wā. Uh, e noho ana mātou kai, ro, kai raro i te tuanui o tēnei tō tātou ware uh, te arau tāpaki, uh, nā tērā, āhuatanga uh, o, te, o inei pakitara, inei paupau, ki nā tini tūpuna, ko a tai i tautoko ana i a mātou i tēnei wā tēnā koutou. A tai atu ki a mātou uh, te hunga ora, koutou i te ipurangi tēnā koutou, a tēnā koutou, a tēnā tātou katoa. Uh, a i tika ana tēnei, he uri mātou, no nā iwi e toru o te whakaminenga o rātou e heke mai raro uh, i runga i aua heke uh, mai a kāwhia tai atu ki a taranaki mai a taranaki ki, ki enei nā whenua o nā mātua tūpuna uh, nō reira mai a i a rātou uh, i, a, i, a, i, a, i a rātou i a mātou a tēnā koutou a tēnā koutou a tēnā tātou katoa uh, ko Charlene Maua te Davis a hau, he uri a hau uh, no Ngāti Wehiwehi tai atu ki, e ai ki te kōrero a Rūpene, uh, o Ngāti Kapu, um, uh, tai atu ki a uh, uh, Ngāti Huia uh, ki Kati Huku. He uri huki tēnei uh, no Ngāti Tuaranga Tira uh, ki a Naitahu. Uh, he uri huki i te taho tōku waiu no Taranaki Tūturu, uh, tai atu ki a Te Atiawa. Uh, no reira ko Charlene a hau. Ka huri tēnei ki a koe, kia whakamārama. Ha, kia ora tātou. Um, ko tāina we te waka ko rangituhi me whitireanga maunga ko Ngāti Tōti Iwi ko Takpu Ahia Te Marae, ko Pania Solomon Tuku Inua. Kia ora. Ah, kia ora tātou. Uh, ko Ngāti Rākua tu, Tūru, uh, ko Ngāti Huia, ko Tūkorehe, Ko uh, Ngāti Kōriki, ko Ngāti Pare, ko uh, Ngāti Huia, ai, uh, ko Ngāti Kapu, ai, ko Ngāti Mai o Taki. Ko he mai mā kā ki wiringa. Kia ora koutou. Kia ora mai koutou. Uh, Miti mata tatou. I wanted to um, acknowledge the corridor that Huya laid uh, initially around the Hairinga Mai o Tainui Waka. And so the arrival of Tainui Waka um, and acknowledge the beautiful karakia uh, that you opened our corridor with Huya. And, and mainly to acknowledge uh, the tohunga tanga that came on those waka. Uh, around in terms of hotiroa, but also in terms of whaka otirangi. And I want to acknowledge her because part of her uh, sacred role was to be the, the bringer of uh, plants such as the taro and the hue, the oute and the karaka berry. And so we come from these lineages of gardeners, these lineages of um, seed planters, these lineages of people who came to these shores with survivability in mind, um, and they brought with them their own systems and their knowledge and their audacity and tenacity um, to want to establish a new place for us now and into the future. And so maramataka is one of those systems that they brought with them. And so I want to acknowledge that um, tupuna huia of ours, Waka Otirangi, because she set about, as soon as she kind of arrived on the shores of Kafia, 
she set about to set up those gardens to ensure that those kai stocks, those mahinga kai stocks, um, were established for her uri, kei te heke mai. And so those are the systems of which Maramataka derived from. And so she came with her, her already existent knowledge of the moon and the stars. And obviously, as they journeyed via the sea, and they transplanted that knowledge here in Aotearoa. And I need to say, coming from uh, Te Moana Nui Akiwa, they had to adapt a seafaring uh, Moana-based um, economy into what was a vast Nahere-based economy. And so when they arrived, you know, Te Nehe Nehe Nui was huge. It was full and abundant um, with all the kai um, that they would need to exist. And so Maramataka comes, comes into our narratives through those tupuna. And so I just wanted to acknowledge that because what's up here on the, um, on the presentation talks about how it was, it's, a de it's developed from an in-depth knowledge of Ta Tai Whakapapa about Te Whānau Marama. So they already knew, that's how they got here, um, the importance of that Fano marama to our travel here. So they required the ability to travel at night and to utilize those stars and the moon and those cycles to get here. And so um, this was not by accident. And I remember Matuat um, Patarangi talking about the gyra principle we didn't get it right by accident. We were strategic. We were hugely reliant upon the knowledge that came on those waka, um, and hence why we're here. We're not going anywhere, and neither is our kawa and tikanga tukuiho. So specific to mā tauranga, āhapu, and āwhānau, so over time, so from that narrative, over time, we became one with this whenua. And so not only did we have our um, knowledge that we brought from the islands, we also um, adapted to those that were already here. And so Cooper had left some messages about other living beings that were here. So this relationship to those that were already here, such as Iwi wairua, patu paerehe, you call them whatever you want. They had that knowledge um, that they learnt from them as well. And I acknowledge the patu paerehe today because it's all ue today. It's a, it's a rainbow kind of a day. And patu paerehe travel upon the rainbows. And so I want to acknowledge that, that those kinds of um, systems of, of knowing were also things that they um, learned about, but sometimes we don't talk about, and particularly in this space that we occupy in Rungoa, these are the kinds of conversations we have. So it was a system that helped our tūpuna to read, predict, and strategically plan ahead to ensure their survivability. So I think about that for us today, and I wonder what the message is for us today about how close we are to the whenua. We call ourselves tangata whenua, and we acknowledge being having mana no te whenua. How many of us are planting seeds? How many of us have got rua gardens in our backyards? How many of us are going to the sea to pure? How many of us are swimming in our, in our awa so that our awa remembers our name? I just ask those questions because I think the things we could be doing to ensure that survivability continues. And so it's a traditional system that our tūpuna developed over time to help us to navigate the space of mahinga kai um, and marakai. And I'm gonna tap Pania next because I think she's got something to talk about around her koro. So we'll fast forward to, to now. Okay, kia ora. Um... I just wanted to have a korero about um, home um, and our nannies and koros and how my koro introduced me to rongoa 
into the Maramataka as a young child who was, he had a garden, a mara that was abundant with nice big, you know, vegetables, um, fruit trees. We used to go and stay at my auntie Wiki's in Raumati and he would have his um, the fishy nets out and he would be mending them. And I didn't know, at, you know, at that time, but he knew the maramataka. He knew when to go and fish. So he, they didn't waste anyone's time. He knew when to plant his garden. And then when I became a young mum in the 80s, he gave me a maramataka. And so I've been following it since then and not really knowing the research that we're learning more about it now. So we have, we all have those memories of our grandparents that um, was, that, that, that had been brought down to them from their tūpuna. So it's alive in each and every one of us and in all our whānau. So it's really close to home and to be able to use that for our survival and to help us um, in this day and age with the way that things are happening in the world. Um, I think we're truly blessed there. Kia ora. It's now my time to speak. The, the thing is that what I'm listening to is the way that our tūpuna are time travellers, that they knew what was before them. And so when, when I think about that, I think about the tūpuna who came down here to this coastline, right? our tainui whānau that came down here, and my tūpunas who arrived. And then the relationships with other iwi and going back up to Tainui and up to Napuhi. So I'm talking about my kuia, Ruhia, Ruiha, Takutai Hakune. She was Matane Tafifi's daughter. And how she connected us to Nati Hine, Nati Reihia in the far north. And as you see on here, this Maramataka that we have here was held by Ariana's uh, Tupuna sister-in-law and he held that for quite a while but it was Elston Best that went to speak to him and realized when he was talking to that Karawa that actually it came down from um, the far north this Maramataka that he had and a lot of people or Elston Best didn't understand the tuhu of what those are but when we actually looked at it it was easy to read it's easy to read because you're in the environment. You can see when the sea is calm. You can see when the wind is full or it's new. And that you can time those cycles. So it was very interesting for us to read this. And then we thought, is this a Rokua Maramataka or is this a Anapui Maramataka? And then we decided it's both. Let's be fair about this. It's both. Um, but we know, I know that it would have came down through um, the Blue Heart, who would have brought it down here, possibly with her, um, with her stepson. And I look at a photo of her in the book Carpeti, and they've misnamed her. It's our other tūpuna, they said it was. He need to 50. It isn't. It's Blue Heart. And um, that then is the time travel thing I'm telling you about. Because you look at your tūpuna, you look at the work that they've left you, and you feel it. It's like whakapapa, it's like waiata or tētia. You feel it, and then it takes you back. You feel it, and then you may come forward into the future of what they are predicting in the messages they left us, either in this form or through our um, or tētia. So um, we had a, an interesting time gathered together at my whare um, to think about the maramataka. The notion was, let's actually think about our nannies. How would they gather? Oh, they have a cup of tea, might have some scones. They sit around the table. They make it really noa 
as you're thinking about very tapu things, we better bring it down to noa so that we can discuss things and if we got things wrong, we can chuck that out. So the three of us did that and we had strips of paper and little notebooks that we had been um, uh, documenting through our years as Rungawa practitioners. And we're documenting where all oh, the phase of that moon, the feeling, um, whereabouts we got that particular rako, how does it look with the other rako, what moon phase happens uh, here, it's the sap rising here, but why isn't it rising at this other whenua? So we did a lot of our own research. We're very good archivists, actually, when I think about it. Um, and I've... Um, I realised that uh, among the three of us, and I know there are other people out there who have little scraps of paper and notebooks, and maybe their nanny left a little scribble on something, or their kuru did. Those are all valuable and tonga that we bring it together. There's a wealth of um, information available for all of us. And so this was a really heartfelt joyful time, starting during the day and ending maybe the next morning. I think it was about half past four. But time, there's no time. And um, we more could it all about this, but it's, it was very hard for me to actually put the on that calendar. Oh, it's going to go in the kitchen. There's going to be kai. Um, I'll make sure it's kind of not hidden. I mean, it's hidden and not quite out there. So there's those things that we think about, the information that we're going to put out on the limitaka. Because there's so much more behind it. Uh, and I know within the very, I'm looking around, there's Hokainga in here, some hapu are in here. There's so much wealth in your, in your little notebooks at home somewhere. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Should I just talk about that bit? I just want to talk about the um, ten pai tuhu. You know, we we looked at these pai tuhu, and we um, I come from people who who love to fish, eel white baiting, and um, and I had caught it all with um, the sister Uriwa. And we were comparing notes, what what she thinks is going to happen this season because she's gone to read the river. And um, and we, I said to her, well, I think things are going to be slow because we're noticing that when all the things are warming up, right? The because the the rako are um, blossoming all the time and fruiting, they're going to be weaker because there's so much energy going into that. And I said, you're not going to have a good season. And she says, well, hang on, I'll go see the river first. I'll figure that out. So she does that. And I'm not allowed to tell you where she goes to read it. She comes back, oh, you're bloody right. I said, I told you, you're not going to have a good season. And so, you know, those particular um, tohu and those awareness that hokainga have um, you're never going to get it in a book. You're going to get this in Fano, and um, that's Fano over at Antihuia, Fano at Kapu. They, they, those ones who have been, they hold these treasures, and it's up to them whether they want to share it. Right? So that was one thing. Right? Fabulous. Um, I think you know the whole idea behind us wanting to just have whānau kōrero um, around Maramataka is that that's the reality. These are whānau taonga. And so whether you've had it handed down to you over time or whether this might be the first time you're hearing about Maramataka, the most important thing is that you start. And so one of the things that we did is that we, um, before we developed this Maramataka for Rungoa, we were all kind of practicing our own maramataka or this particular maramataka. So we, we're keen gardeners. 
And part of the role of being a kaitiaki rongoa is that you have to know, you have to be willing to give back to Papa Tuanuku, me Atua, first. It's your first kind of obligation. And so we all garden, and that's a joy. It's a joy to, um, to lay a seed and to um, nurture that seed and to watch it blossom and then to feed your whānau. It's a, it's a real treasure to be able to know I can go out into my backyard and that rungwā medicine is there to support my whānau. And so these are the times we're living in. These are the adaptive times. We can no longer only rely upon te waonui o tāne or uh, tangaroa and henemoana and those places to be our, our only healers. We have to start to take responsibility ourselves and be kaitiaki in our own whare. And so that's probably the 2022 pre-climate change convo um, that we want to lay out is that you have to start to prepare your whānau now. So no matter where you start, start. And so the, this corridor here is about saying, you know, this is the unique features or some of the unique features of this particular maramataka is that it's a 30-day maramataka and you can go all over Aotearoa, New Zealand and some are doing 27.5 days. I'm not sure how that works or 29 day or whatever. There's many, many, many variations of maramataka. And so there, these are not maramataka that are wrong in comparison to yours. No, kei te he tera. Because that's their taonga. That's their taonga tuku. And so one of the things around demystifying maramataka is to say, you, with us, we were naturally drawn to this before we knew the whakapapa of it. So that's something else to consider. Start with the things that you're drawn to and then hit, create the connection. So for us, it's always through whakapapa. And then you consolidate the connection through the tikanga that you practice. So having mara in, in our backyards is the way in which we truly practiced this. So that's one of the things I'd like to say is that with Maramataka, it's not the Flash app on your phone, even though they're helpful. Um, look up to the sky. Go outside at night and go and have a look and just sit and see what you can see. See what drops. Start to journal. Create your own um, living, learning wānanga. Because those atua um, are waiting for you to create a connection with them. And it's not on your phone. And it's not in the wall planner. Hey? It's actually a living, um, active, ongoing, lifelong relationship. So... That's one of the things, the 10 paito who are there, this is a unique feature of this. I love, that's what I love about this maramataka, is that there are paitohu. And I remember before I realised, it was right sitting in front of me, that the key was in Elsdon Best Fishing and blah, blah, blah book, um, that I actually worked out the code anyway. So I worked it out by going down to the moana, going down to the awa, being in my māra, and I had kind of worked out what the code was regardless. Um, and so um, whether you've got Elston Beth's version of it or you've got your own, kei te pai tira, um, koe na te ahotanga. And then the final thing about this particular maramataka is that um, we, well, I, um, take out atua. That's the day that I take out of, my, of our maramataka to realign between Fido, which is the new moon, and uh, uh, Turu, which is the full moon. So um, th that's, the, that's the day that helps me to realign um, when I'm needing to do alignment. Kapai? Awesome. Okay, so um, 
this is a photo of our launch when we launched this Marmataka this year. We're not here promoting it because actually, to be honest, it's sold out. Um, so um, we had the fortunate uh, opportunity um, thinking Deanna and Kahu at, at KCDC, who invited us on behalf of Te um or Kapiti, to uh, bring some, some, I suppose for us, some integrity to the maramataka um, and to bring a maramataka that connected us to here. And so one of the things we did, and, and Hamaima's already talked to the process, we're really lucky um, we have a collective of Rungwa practitioners from Wellington up to here. And um, there's about 35 to 40 of us. And so there's a whole lot of mātauranga in that collective. Um, and it's wonderful to wānanga in that way, um, to have a core group who are focused on rungwa particularly, um, but also able to add to our thinking around these things. So that's, that's who we are. Um, we're gonna talk to the features of the maramataka and how they arose um, at Hamaima's place. And of course, we're, we're Tainui hard, so of course we're gonna start with Tainui. Um, and one of the things that happened at Hamaima's place, we only had a weekend together and we trusted wholeheartedly that the atu and the tūpuna were gonna provide us with what was necessary for developing this. And one of the things that happened is that we, we went to our journals and we realised there were particular rākau. We made sure that this feature was going to be about rākau. Um, presented themselves in at particular months. So that's, there was no other way but that they presented themselves. So we looked through our photo journals, our handwritten journals, um, calendars, those sorts of things, and these... These were times when we were working with these plants. And so Tainui came up and then we started to have in-depth conversations. There were no book references because we really are, we support people to learn with puka puka. But here's the thing. If you tune into these plants and you have a true relationship, they will show you how to utilize them. They will show you their medicine. And so that's what we chose to do. That was the method. And um, it was almost like a voice came through. And so down below where it says, I am Tainui, I bestow my ancestral gifts, bringing attention to one sacred breath. I relieve you. I restore you from restriction. And I breathe life into your lineage. He pepeha tera. So it was like that's kind of, that's the message the Srako wanted to communicate through us. So we pl placed that on there to give you an idea of its healing potentiality. And then um, we made a decision and they the words fell out as well to create totally new whakatawaki, which is what's all through the smaramataka. So kāwhia ki runga tainui ki raro. Talks about beyond kāwhia grows kumarahau. So uh, tainui is a cousin to kumarahau. And it performs the same kind of function when you use it as a medicine. Um, but it, the kōrero that was handed to me from the tohunga that I learned from, te awhina riwaka, was that um, the tainui was on, tainui is the rako was on the skids of the Tainui Waka. And so it came through um, south of Kafia and grows prolifically down here. And so um, that's what that particular whakatawaki refers to, is that you'll find that it, it grows more prolifically, prolifically down here. And so we thought about that and then we thought about for us, you know, these are our signatures. These are our iwi signatures. And so this is all about whakapapa. Um, so, so that you can understand, because people have, ha have these maramataka and they think that these are lovely, 
but it's really important to know kia whakahuhu e te kōrero kaimuri. Kapai, did you want to add anything? Um, well, I think the only thing I want to add with um, tainui, you know, when you dry it, it becomes quite potent. And when you brew it, it'll be red. It comes out red. And I always think there's there's something about the Arako that has that um, beautiful colour that s signifies what it's going to do for you. So if you're pregnant and you have low blood pressure, let's say, it's going to ra raise your blood pressure. If you have high blood pressure, don't take tainui. Okay? But if you uh, have um, uh, wee wee in you, you know, maybe um, it's used a lot with people who have cancer to lift up the modi and the strength of their tinana. Right? It does that physically, but then the other thing that tainui does, and you don't hear much about it, it does affect your mood. It does lift your vibration and that from depression and it lifts you up. Um, and it's about who makes that rungoa for you. Okay? If it's a whānau member, that'd be great because you have connection. Because these, as you know, they're living, they're tūpuna, they're our tūpuna, they're living beings and they're more powerful than we know. And we're in this time now with the um, therapeutics bill that's coming up, you know, and they want to lock our rākau and our medicine into these kind of Western boxes. The Modi and the Waitara can't sit in a Western box. These uh, rākau of ours have such strong Modi and Waitara, and that's what actually, as Pōrongoa, that's what we're trying to protect, to keep it there. Yeah because we don't split things out from a rako and use only one compound and then make something from that. It's all together, like a whānau. Mm -hmm. And it's like a papa. Okay. I'll just add one thing in there. Like how we've put here, I relieve you, I restore you from restriction. I breathe life into your lineage. So tainui will help you breathe if you're sick. It'll um, bring up the mucus and it will restore you from being restricted in here. So we use this a lot with Fano during the COVID, um, out to giving our uh, packs out to our Fano. Yeah, kia ora. This is, um, it might look a bit busy, and so it should be. Um, this is the actual calendar view part of the Maramataka. And I wanted to just acknowledge that um, the way we designed it, we're going to go into the Paitohu in a minute, was that it's a guide. It's not, an, it's not something to be considered like a Bible. This is your guide for you to follow, for you to test, for you to challenge. And that's really about you having a relationship inside of a maramataka so that you can kind of see how things work and then look for variations. So this is part of your own rangahau. Um, and part of the thing that we saw was that our whanau have lost this ability to self-heal. And to be honest, you're going to be the healer of yourself. Nobody else can do this for you. It's you. You have the same potent energy that I have. You come from the same atua that I do. And so um, part of our uh, idea around the purpose of this was that so that people could follow this as a guide and then note how they went with following this as a guide. And so it's got all of those symbols on there. Um, for and you can see the days when there's lots and lots on there and those are the good days those are the grunty days to kind of do almost anything and everything but I also want to say there are also days that you need to consider if you're going to go hard the neat thing about maramataka is that it also has a has a, a down cycle so it's not an, a, about being up 30 days of the month 
This is about flow and energy. And so this is about self-management. And so these tohu, pai tohu, talk about that. We also put a little growing, oh, I'm going to get to use this maybe. I don't know. There we go. There's a growing um, tip there. So if you want to grow it, there's a little bit of a growing tip there. And then to look at your cycles between fetal and tūru. So fetal is there, uh, tūru is here. Um, and then to follow these symbols. So I'm going to go to the next slide, should I? There you go. Is this on? Oh, it is. Okay. I wanted to um, look at one of those um, tohu mōte whakatau. So um, I've figured out this, it's really a good day to not do anything but to go visit a contrary brother of mine who, um, who has a way of um, expressing himself um, about our tūpuna or various people that he has um, have hi had history with. So I want to alert to um, his kōrero about our auntie, and I see her uri is here, Auntie Maikara. And the story that he told, because he's contrary, I can only get him on these days, was about going to Old Coach Road. And Auntie Maikara and him were walking, and she talked about coming across the river on the old trap with the horse during the war years with two nannies. Unfortunately, I've forgotten their names, but I've got it written down. And she talked about before they um, came up onto this side of the river, they got out of the trap and they did their karakia, washed their hands, and then he said, and then they called their um, shark. A, a what? I said, he said, yeah, they called their shark. And Auntie Maikara was up on the bank and their shark, their kaitiaki came round their feet and their um, hands and then went. And then they got on the trap and then they went into Otaki. Uh, to get their supplies and go to the doctor to get their medicine. I always laugh about they have to do their thing before, before they come over this side. So those days, those days when there's nothing, nothing to do or that you have keep your energy low, those are the days that you visit those contrary brothers, sisters or nannies. And that's when they'll have a kōrero with you. Um, they're also the days when you take them for a drive and then you find out, amazing information you've been going the same road all your life but you never knew this particular piece of information he told me about finding a waka um, baler down Rangiudu road and having to throw it away because it was too tapu and his nanny told him off and these are stories that we have rich among our whanau and it was, and I look at it, and said, it's always that moon phase, Monte Fakato. That's when I know to go see that brother, and and you know to listen and then make notes after. I'm never allowed to record them. Kia ora. So these are the pai pai tohu that we've developed. And so we, we decided when we looked at um, the original Maramataka that um, we didn't want to add those symbols in here. We thought the idea was we had been looking through our own Rongoa journals and that these were the types of activities that we were undertaking um, and that we wanted to include them. So in order to keep the old Matauranga intact, we determined and developed these new paitohu. And so, um, you know, people will have thoughts about that. Um, but there was a, a wanting to maintain the integrity of the old knowledge so as not to um, confuse things. And so the paitohu are in three areas. One is the white water, the water symbols. And as you look through Mote Puna Way, so we do lots of walk, uh, fresh water mahi when we're doing work with our whanau. So they are fresh water dedications, te rapia ko te tohi, um, ko te pure, uh, blessings and clearings, Mote Waitai, so um, we do sea 
based whakawātia or puri, um, and then mote wairako. So we do lots of days where we're combining wai and the rako. So we're making lots of things on those days. And so that's what's up there, karakia, wairako rongoa, making the medicines, hinu ora. So we're making uh, midi midi oils and things. Waiariki, those are like um, hot soaks. Uh, Whakapiripiri, so those are poultices. And wai marama, we're utilising the energy of the marama to infuse energy into our wai. Whenua ora, plant symbols. Uh, Mote uh, whakato kākano, so that's our planting days. Um, Mō te rako, so that's when we're doing seed, putting our seedlings in the ground, those sorts of things. And mō te hauhake rako, when we're uh, harvesting and drying our rako. Then the final one is tangata ora, which is what Hemaima was talking about, was when we do the body work. And often when you think about rongoā, you hear lots about the physical mahi that we do but it's equally as important to be doing that other mahi in the background. So it's karakia, so mote whakatau, so that's the time Hemaima was talking about. We do mahi karakia, we utilise taonga puoro for healing, we do mahi nao or calming practices, and mahi whakana, so it's all about um, your mental health and your mental well-being. Uh, mote whakaora, so that's things like your physical well-being practices. So those are the days to go and book your midi midi, to go and um, have your romi romi, to have all those kinds of treatments that might help you to support your well-being. And then the last one is mote whaka oho. This is really important because those are those tamatea phases. And it's the time to be cautious. It's the time to not be travelling around lots and not to be busy. Um, tamatea moons can, um, it's a really fiery energy, koina te atua, or tamatea. Um, and so we always say, don't plan your trips around this time. Don't go traipsing around the universe, because honestly, uh, Ricky Solomon, who's done a lot of research, he used to um, be a coroner. And one of the things he found was a lot of our, our whanau um, would pass away or have accidental deaths at this time. And so it's just, it's just a kia matara, right? It's a, it's a warning time. It's not saying you have to lock yourself in your house and not go anywhere and don't go and get the shopping or whatever you need. It's just kia matara. Don't, don't go and do your world trips on this day, on this phase. Kapai? Oh, kapai, can I just go back up to the why order? So, you know, um, just as Hokanga, and we have um, whānau here who from other iwi, other hapu, and they don't know where they're going to either gather or go have a pūre. And so it's really important that um, our local people make themselves available and, you know, give that information. So I'm talking about... Um, having a pūre at Ōtaki Beach. It's not the place to go have it in front of the uh, pavilion where I heard some people went. It, there is a place in Ōtaki and that's um, just before Waituhu. Okay? That's where traditionally our people went and had pūre there, but not by the um, pippi beds that go in front of the um, pavilion and north and, and south of that pavilion. And it's just about, one, ask us to make ourselves available, and that's anywhere in this mutu, eh? So if I was going somewhere else, I'm not going to go into some other rohe. I'm not going to go in the hauhaki. I'm not going to do any of those things. I have enough sense to actually take my own. And we've worked out using those um, wax cloth they keep kawa kawa fresh for about three weeks. You know, you can take your own rongoa with you. So I, don't want, I want to make that clear. The other thing is Ōtaki has a lot of springs and um, some of those springs have gone dry because of the farming, but other springs are still active. 
And we don't tell um, people where they are because we want them to be active and fresh, you know, because we have seen them destroyed. And so as a kaitiaki, that's one um, secret. Well, it's not a secret anymore, it's out. But it's, the, it's like, yeah, but where is it? You know, we know. And uh, so I'm just saying that to people who come from other little here, these are the things that happen everywhere. And it's, um, it's one of our main jobs as a rungwa practitioner, as haukainga, how we look after our whenua and our why around us. Kapai. Um, whenua ora. I'm just talking about when, like, we're in the Nahide and you have the different tohu. Um, we're not looking up at the trees, we're looking down on Papa, and you see the different seedlings that have dropped. So you know, oh, that's a toa, or, you know, that's a kahikatia. Mm. And with the moon phases, you know, with a full moon, the um, the water is high. The water is high. The tide is high. The water is high in your tinana, which means you're more emotional as well. So the marmataka can determine how our emotions are as well as the energies in the trees and, and the plants. Um, in the in Papatuanuku when we're walking through the um, Nahiri. So that's so the um, the Maramataka is a real guide for us that way and we're really blessed that our Tupuna was so in tune with the Te ao, that we know how to um, traverse our way through. Well, if we look at Tatara more and, and we, we use it a lot for ourselves and our whānau, because it you know might calm us down, because it's all about peace. But the but the message it is saying, the message is seeking the answers within. So it is actually telling us to be still. When we when Tatara more revealed itself that night, we were so excited because it was such a tangible feeling and um, energy that came through. And the excitement then had to come down. We had to bring our excitement down and be still and listen to its message because we know how it is used because we use it. But also, it's very um, particular to our iwi, Ngāti Tō. One of the kōrero that we have is... Um, and our Taranaki migration south is that we came on Te Taramoa. And so when I think about, when I go up on the Maunga, when I go up to Maunga Taranaki, Tataramoa has a very thin um, row and uh, it's quite, it, it can bite, it bites quite a lot. You really have to have a relationship with it to um, be able to even partake of it. Sometimes our rongoa doesn't need to be harvested. Sometimes you just have to sit by it. Sometimes you just have to be in the presence of it. And I think that's where we're moving to. If we truly tune into the energetic cycles of the maramataka, but also the energetic cycles of our healing spaces, it's not just the plants, it's the wai, it's the whenua, um, we don't need to do much. We just actually have to be still. And so when I think about um, the difference in the tātara more that's on Maunga Taranaki to what's here on, in Tararua or in our other spaces around the, the rohe, it's a different species, but it's, it's wider and it's more grantier here. It's really subtle, the um, healing capacity of the tātara more from Taranaki. And so what we find is that we will um, have the right medicine all the time. So for our whānau that are not from here, 
um, having medicines from your home, your your wāk, wāhi kāinga, is often really important. Um, so if you're home and you not don't live here and you're mātawaka and you're going home, go and collect your wai to bring back. Go and um, talk to your aunties and uncles about bringing back medicines for you. Bring it home with you. Plant it in your garden um, because that has a, has a particular connection with you from a Modi perspective. And so Tantara Mo is one of our really, it's another signature for the Art Confederation. And so we tell these narratives to remind our mukopuna tamariki that this is their inheritance. And it's really important that we tell these stories because this is what we want to be normalized that they can, they can and they have the ability to heal themselves. So we're no longer waiting for someone else. This now becomes our norm. So, koina te kōrero o tātara moa. Last thing, because I'm looking at our time, um, in terms of tangata ora, is just in terms of those moon phases. So I just put up a couple of examples of how you might want to um, interact and document what's going on for you um, during particular phases. So we've just come through mutu whenua on some maramataka, but it's mutu for us, huero and tiria. We've just come through that cycle. And um, our tauiwi whanau, they, they kind of have big, huge rituals around new, new moon and that it's a new cycle and all of those things. But actually the atua that we um, acknowledge in our maramataka is whiru. And so it's a, it's, a, it's a time for inner reflection. Not a time for being out there. It's a time for inner reflection. And so you can be, you know, it's quite the opposite. And so you can still be doing ritual. You can still be doing ritual, but just remind yourselves about what, is the appropriate ritual for this time. And so um, we encourage whānau to journal, we encourage whānau to, um, to, to think about what's gone past. So on a, on a mutu whenua day, we might get people to reflect on the past. What's gone on that past month? What's coming forward into, from this new moon onwards? And how do you want to enter into this next phase? So that's a way to kind of uh, manage yourself and, and predict and to look forward. And then the tangaro phases I've acknowledged, I start to get a bit hyper in the tangaro phases and I start to feel my personal energy shift in the kore kore whakapiri ki nga tangaro phase. So it's like a prep day for me. And if I don't have the prep day, I land into tangaro and I go, I'm going hard and I haven't had a warm up. And so part of um, understanding, because um, I'm, I'm a water baby, so of course I'm going to have water responses. And so tangaroa mua is all about that thing of observing what's around you, what's coming before you, understanding the environments that you're in. Tangaroa roto, I always do a self-check. Hey, what's going on? What's up? What's up? What's up? Um, and to watch my emotions on these tangaroa phases, because like the tides, ooh, can be a taipare, you know, it's that kind of movement. Think of the tidal movements, he te mato. And then the tangaroa kiokio, and I love the kiokio. So I always think about the connection between tangaroa and tāne with tangaroa kiokio, and it's the, the coming together of the two domains. Um, and so I think about what are the fertile seeds that I've planted through this phase, but also that I want to continue to plant moving forward. So it's a real practical tool. Not everybody's out there gardening now, but we'd love them to. Not everybody's out there in the water collecting kaimwana, but we'd love them to. Um, so you have to kind of come up with a cycle or a system that's actually going to going to match and meet your needs. That's the practical version of maramataka. And we just wanted to kind of share our, our thinkings and our feelings around this um, into the future. Final words? Yeah, yeah. 
Um, well, I was actually thinking of those days when, you know, it's number two, it's fiddle. Those are the days when you stay home and research. Those are the days when you put together your archive, when you may be doing herbarium or you're sorting out your seeds. You're not going anywhere, but you're staying internal and you're having a relationship with what you've done. So um, those are precious days that um, we use that energy of being still, of being close to ourselves by actually putting your focus or your attention on those uh, documentation that you have in whatever form that is, because that could be an art form, could be painting, could be pottery, whatever it is. But um, I, I find those days very precious because you may not get those days. Once Tungar all starts, you're out there like she is sometimes, you know. That's my final take. Um, I'd just like to um, at this time, um, you know, our Mata Matak is a real guide for us to have a mother to start being self-sustainable in this, in this time, um, how the world's changing with climate change. And, you know, by using our guide or using the guide of the Mata Mataka, you will have um, an abundance of kai and an abundance of, you know, when you go fishing. So I just want to leave those words as to start being self-sufficient, um, to start so you can fend for your whanau um, for the future because it's really important. Kia ora. Nō reira, kia koutou katoa e whakarunga ana mai. A tēnei te mihi mai o hakia koutou. A ko te tumanako mai i a mātou. Um, te whakamenenga nei. Uh, kia huri o kānohi, kia huri o tinana, kia huri whaka hoki o wairua uh, ki te ara o tēnei te māramataka. Um, ko te mea whakahirehire kia mātou, um, kei rotu i ākoe to ake mana, to ake mauri, to ake tapu. Koina te rongoa e whai ake koutou. Uh, nō reira e tika ana tēnei karakia ko te whitinga o, te, o hina, Ko te ao nui, ko te ao roa, ko te ao mārama e, ko te pō nui, ko te pō roa, ko te pō tikitia, e te mārama, e hina, hene whakamautai, ka pūpū a ke te wai, ka rere, whetī, whetī, whetī ora e, haumi e hui e, tāi ki, kia ora mai. Tēnei, te mihi atu rā ki a koutou, e a kuwhaia, ko hara mai nei tēnei rā te kororo ki a mātou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa, whaia hamaima, whaia pānia, Charlene, tēnā koutou. I would like you all to join me in thanking our speakers today. In the essence of time, uh, we'll ask that our Fano hold their questions for those in person. Uh, we'll be uh, heading through for Kai in a moment, and we'd welcome you to uh, have a corridor and, and present your questions through there. For those in the online space, uh, we ask that you send your uh, partai through via email, uh, and there's an email in the registration form that you'll notice, so please send them through, and we'll undertake to get them back to you in the next few days. Um, just uh, in a moment, I'd like to ask uh, Tammy to come up and uh, present the two prize packs. We have prize packs each week for those uh, on uh, one for those online and one for those in person. Uh, and so, uh, Tammy, no my harem. Uh, tēnā koutou. We have um, just going to quickly announce the online winner so that they don't depart before we um, leave for Kai. So, Bo Markland, you're our winner for the prize pack. 
Papai, and we were going to give it to the best question in the room for today, but we'll just we'll have to be working a little bit tinny here and just make something up. So we're going to try and go for maybe the oldest person in our room room today. Um, I'm thinking, oh, where to start? I don't want to be rude. <laughs> Koi? Matua Bill? Kukui te toa, Matua Bill. Kukui, Matua Bill. We'll get, we'll get that. Uh, we'll get that to you, uh, Ekoro. Um, just for those who are hoping to return next week, um, we have uh, Dr. Mahi Narangi Baker speaking to us. Um, one important note to uh, one important uh, piece of information to note is that our we'll have a slight change of time. Next week will be one to two p.m. Uh, the following weeks, however, 11th and 18th of November, respectively, we'll be back to 12 to 1. Uh, on the 11th of November, we'll have uh, Ponamu Skelton joining us. And on the 18th of November, we'll have Professor Lingi Ma Tamua uh, joining us uh, to speak to us as well. Uh, for those who are, um, haven't yet um, registered, it's not too late. Uh, please do go to wananga.com and click on the Lunchtime Lecture Series banner and register. Just allows us to manage numbers and to also stay in touch with you with the uh, with any messages. Um, without further ado, I'd like to invite us all through to Kai uh, in Te Kite Uru Uru Tau, uh, and I'll just uh, have a, a karakia for us so that we can go through there and, and start Kai immediately. Nō reira, uh, kei noi tātou. Uh, kai e Kai e horonei hei oranga mō mātou tīnana mō mātou wairua. Uh, kia tūturu o Whiti Whakamaua, kia tīna, te haumie, huie, tāne kie. Kia ora tātou. Hara mai ki te kai.